Hello, my name is Elizabeth and I am with the Indiana State Poultry Association. In this video, I'm going to go over what biosecurity is and how we can prevent the spread of disease. But first, let's review the important role that poultry plays in Indiana. Indiana is number one in duck production, number two in egg production, and number four in turkey production. Clearly, the industry plays a huge role in our economy, creating over 7,000 jobs and contributing billions of dollars. Whether you work on a production farm, raise exhibition birds, or have a small backyard flock, we all must play our part in preventing the spread of disease. What exactly does biosecurity mean? Bio means life and security means protection, so biosecurity is simply the protection of life and includes a set of procedures that we can follow to prevent the spread of disease. Throughout this presentation, we're going to focus on poultry, but please be aware that these procedures can be followed with other livestock species as well. Why worry if you have just a small flock? Well, in any species, disease can spread rapidly and can be difficult to control. As animal caretakers, it is our responsibility to keep our flocks healthy. Not only will this prevent the spread of disease, but also increase efficiency and performance. While it varies on the particular disease, there are multiple ways that birds can become ill. First, birds can spread disease. This might be from bird to bird contact or through manure, feathers, or other litter. Second, vehicles and equipment such as tractors and trucks can spread disease. Third, disease can be spread through people. They can transmit it through handling birds or they can carry it on their boots or clothing. Fourth, disease can stay on egg cartons, cages, tools, and other poultry equipment and then be spread that way. Whether coming home from a poultry club meeting, the county fair, or the feed store, it is your responsibility to be aware of what potential ways disease could be spread to your flock. Being proactive is the key to prevent disease, which is a much better option than having to control the disease later. The United States Department of Agriculture has created a program called Defend the Flock, which is exactly what it sounds like. They have created a list of guidelines to follow to defend your flock from disease. These steps include keep your distance, keep it clean, don't haul disease home, don't borrow disease from your neighbor, know the warning signs of infectious bird disease, and report sick birds. The first step is keep your distance. This means exactly what it sounds like. As mentioned before, disease can be spread by bird-to-bird -bird contact as well as through people. Therefore, it is important to limit the contact your birds have with other birds and people. This can be done by limiting visitors to see your flock. And if you do allow them, ensure that they have not been around other birds. Plastic boot covers or a foot bath to disinfect boots are a couple ways that protect from bringing pathogens into the coop. Wild birds are another source that can spread disease. Protect your flock by having proper housing structures. This means that birds won't be able to get into the coop to share feed or water with your chickens, and it will also limit the contact with manure. I mentioned that you can create a foot bath to place outside the coop. To create this, all you really need is a tub, a scrub brush, and disinfectant. Mix the disinfectant according to its directions and use a scrub brush to wipe the bottom of your boots. I've also seen people place artificial grass in the bottom of the tub so that they can just scrub the boots as they walk through. Be sure that the foot bath gets changed often and is not accessible for any critters to get into. The second step of Defend Your Flock program is to keep it clean. This step includes thorough disinfecting of clothes, footwear, and equipment. It also includes removing litter and manure from the coop to minimize bacterial growth and pathogens. In the case of any mortality, it is vital to remove the carcass immediately and determine what the cause of death was. If it was due to illness, be sure to disinfect the coop and monitor other birds for disease. The easiest biosecurity step to take is wash hands. As always, wash with warm water and soap before and after visiting your flock. Step 3 is don't haul disease home. This step can take a little more dedication to achieve. 
Vehicle tires, cages, and equipment need to be cleaned before and after coming in contact with other flocks. This includes visiting farms, going to exhibition shows, and fairs. Quarantining new or returning birds is also important. This will allow time for any symptoms to show, or, and if the birds are infected, it will stay confined to that area. Returning birds, such as from the fair, should be kept in a separate coop for at least two weeks, and new birds for at least 30 days. Step four of Defend Your Flock program is don't borrow disease from your neighbor. This step describes the importance of having your own supplies. And if you do borrow tools, crates, or other equipment, again, disinfect it thoroughly before and after use. Wood crates or cardboard egg cartons cannot be cleaned properly, so should never be shared, and if possible, avoid it altogether. The second to last step is to be aware of the warning signs of infectious disease. The quicker disease is detected, the easier it is to treat and prevent spreading. You know your birds the best and will be able to tell if they are sick. There are many symptoms, and some may differ depending on the disease, but there are multiple common signs to be aware of. These include sudden death, diarrhea, decreased or loss of egg production, lack of energy or appetite, sneezing, coughing, nasal discharge, swelling of tissues around the eyes and the neck, and discoloration of the wattles, combs, and legs. This slide just shows a few examples of what a sick bird might look like. Again, as a flock owner, you know this isn't common behavior, so be sure to act upon it as soon as it occurs. The final step of the Defend Your Flock program is to report sick birds. There are multiple numbers to call, including your local vet, Purdue Extension agent, the state vet, the Animal Disease Diagnostics Lab at Purdue, the USDA, or even the Biosecurity Hotline. These contacts will be able to guide you what next possible steps to take in your particular situation. That concludes the steps to follow for the Defend Your Flock program, but I want to go over one more important factor in preventing the spread of disease, and that is pest control. Rodents such as mice, and as mentioned before, wild birds can also transmit disease. So pest control is vital in a healthy flock. Proper housing will help you to control pests as well. These are some examples of what not to do. In the top left picture, you can see that a wild bird is sharing a water bucket with the chicken. The other three pictures show that the chickens are being exposed to wild animals that could not only kill them, but they could pass on disease as well. These pictures show proper housing systems. The top two pictures show that the flocks are protected from predators and wild birds. In the bottom left-hand corner, the picture shows that the watering system is set up so that the water stays clean and fresh. And in the bottom right-hand corner, the picture shows nesting boxes that may, are made of plastic. This will allow for easy disinfecting. There are a variety of different disinfectants that are available, and it will be up to you to decide which one will be most effective for your needs. This is just a chart with a variety of different products, and like anything else, there are disadvantages and advantages for each. Lastly, the Indiana State Poultry Association is a great resource to contact for any needs related to poultry. We work with backyard flocks, schools, extension, as well as large-scale production farms. Through outreach and education programs, we are here to provide you with the resources you need. Thank you for your time, and if you have any questions, reach out to us at ispa.purdue.edu.